So last year, uh, after I went to the castle in Denmark, I, I got to go back over to Denmark and do another tour. And um, when I was, uh, I was going over there to do a tour, and a friend of mine from Austin, Jess Klein, who's a great singer-songwriter, was doing a tour in Ireland at the same time, and she was opening a bunch of shows for Arlo Guthrie. And I'm, I'm a huge Arlo Guthrie fan. I was just raised on that kind of music. And, and, uh, and so uh, we, she and I share the same guitar player in our band, and, and she knew we were going to be in Denmark, and she said, why don't we do after this Arlo tour, we'll do a couple shows in the UK and in Ireland. And so we said, okay, that sounds good. And then she called me back and said, look, if you bring my guitar player, your guitar player, my guitar player slash your guitar player, to Ireland a day early, I'd really like to have him on this last show I opened for Arlo, because it's the National Theater in Dublin. She goes, if you bring him over there before we do this tour, then um, I'll let you play one song opening for Arlo Guthrie. And I was really excited about that, and so I said, yeah, of course. And so we went over there, and so uh, we went backstage, and I got to meet Arlo Guthrie, and that was very exciting. And then I went up on stage to the National Theater, and I played my one song, and, and that was that. And uh, a couple weeks later, we were in Denmark playing this folk festival, and it turned out that I was on a show with Arlo Guthrie, like a, a song swap, you know, where there's five songwriters sitting on a stage and you take turns playing songs. And it was four of us, and then Arlo Guthrie was the host, and he was also playing songs. And uh, and so I want to I, I want to show you guys something real quick. This is a, a tattoo that's a heart, and it says Arlo. <laughs> yeah. So um, <laughs> that would be creepy. Um, but uh, my wife and I, we named our son Arlo, and so this is our Arlo tattoo. I have a tattoo for my daughter, that says Ramona, that's her name. And uh, But a, a friend of mine in Austin who's very tight with Arlo Guthrie said, uh, said you're going to have a good time with Arlo, but don't, uh, don't tell him you named your son after him, and don't show him your tattoo. <laughs> and so I was a little anxious backstage at this folk festival before we were going to go up and play with him. And, and so we were sitting back there with Arlo and a couple other kind of old folk singer guys, and they were, they were talking about uh, biodiesel. And so I just, I have a really bad history with putting my foot in my mouth around my idols. And so I'm just going like, yeah, biodiesel. Yeah, I'm uh -huh, sure. Like I, I wore a long sleeve shirt and just uh, was trying to keep my mouth shut. And so we get up on stage and uh, Arlo's introducing, you know, everybody each as they go. And, and in the song swap format, you go around three or four times, so you get to play three or four songs, but you kind of sit there while everybody else plays, and when it's your turn, it's time to go, like you gotta play. And so my capo, when I put my capo on, um, as you just witnessed, I have to retune um, every time I move the capo or if I take it off, this guitar goes wildly out of tune. So I put my capo up here and I was gonna play that song, Got Your Back, that I just played. That was the first song I was gonna play. I had it all planned out, I had my capo on right here. I was ready to go. And my friend Troy Campbell from Austin, he played a song. And then this guy from Ireland, uh, Mick Flannery, played a song. And then, and then it was going to be my turn. And, this, and then there was another guy from Ireland over here, and then Arlo. And so this guy from Ireland was playing his song. And he said it was a new song, and it was this beautiful song about missing home and missing family. And uh, I'd been on the road for about a month, and I was missing my home, and I was missing my family. And I was anxious and kind of nervous, and we were in this big tent at this festival, and sold out show with 1,200 people, and I started crying in the middle of this song. <laughs> um, which I, 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 like a couple years ago, I quit, I quit smoking cigarettes and I quit drinking coffee for like a year, and I just started crying all the time. And, uh, I'm not really sure why that was, but it was some kind of chemical reaction thing. And, uh, so I'm sitting there and I'm crying, and this guy's playing this beautiful song, and it finishes up, and I'm just I'm falling apart. And Arlo starts to introduce me, and he says, "You know, sometimes you're on the road and you meet songwriters, and we were just in Ireland, and our friend Jess came and opened, and she brought her friend Matt, the electrician, and he played this song. It was the best song I heard in a while. Matt, would you play that song?" And I was still kind of crying, <laughs> and I looked at my capo, and I looked at Arlo, and I looked back at my capo, and I looked at Arlo, and I said. No. <laughs> I just didn't have the I, I didn't have the capacity for rational thought and, and for a split second he looked at me and his eyes kinda narrowed and then he said, It's fine, just play it the next time and I said, Okay. And it all went fine after that. <laughs> and I was so freaked out and uh, and uh, 
I think that, uh, I don't know if this was actually the best song you heard in a while, but I think that the reason we like this song is that um, is that it's the closest thing I've ever written to a folk song, because Arlo was saying at the show, he said, you know, the difference between folk songs and pop songs, not that there's anything wrong with one or the other, but he said folk songs are songs you write for other people, and pop songs are songs you write for yourself. And um, I wrote this song specifically for somebody else named Angela, who helped me out when my car broke down on the side of the road. I was driving up to Dallas for a show, and I promised I would write a letter for her, and I did, and I also wrote this song. Dear Customer Complaint Department, I have nothing to complain about. In fact, I have nothing but good things to say about your company today. Let me begin by saying that normally I avoid your store like the plague. <laughs> but recently on a drive to Dallas, my car broke down on the side of the road. In West Texas, not the direction but the town called West. <laughs> it was the battery, and I got a jump start for free with my AAA card. But the local mom and pop garage were unfortunately unable to assuage my electrical conundrum because my car is not American made. <laughs> so, still running from my earlier jump start, while I drove on down the road for the first time in my life. Praying that I'd see a Walmart. <laughs> now normally your store is like a virus, like Miley Cyrus in a teen magazine. Every five miles on the road, like a toad, a monstrous amphibian on the horizon, entirely blocking out the sun. But today Murphy's Law was riding shotgun, and I didn't see one. 47.5 miles. <laughs> And as I drove into Lancaster, Texas, or an alabaster albatross rose out of the darkness, and I cried tears of joy as I drove around the back to the tire and blue garage. <laughs> and I jumped out with my car still running. I asked a jumpsuited employee if he could change my battery, but he didn't have a smile for me. At this point in the song, I like to point out, um, generally just when I'm in Texas or the South, um, I think it's just appeasing some kind of macho-ness that's still inside me from working construction for a long time, but I need you to know that I know how to change my own car. <laughs> <laughs> and, and in fact, where I was, I didn't know if they were going to have the battery I needed once I had gone in, and my car was on a jump, and they seemed busy, and I thought if I shut off my car to lock it, because I've got like at least $300 worth of equipment in the back of the car, that that and Lancaster is not super awesome, nice part of uh, uh, that part of the country. And, and so I, I was a little concerned and I needed to keep the car running. And so I just need you to know that. <laughs> he said 45 minute wait, but in 45 minutes I was going to be late to my very first show at Uncle Calvin's Coffee House at a church in Northeast Dallas. So I stood under the late afternoon sun on the hot asphalt, my car continued to run, and I thought this is the end of the line. I was running out of gas and running out of time, figuring I'd finish my days in a Walmart parking lot in a heat stroke haze. <laughs> when an angel appeared at my side, and her name tag read Angela, she had pity in her eyes. She said, pull in the bay number two and pop your hood. See what I can do. And she examined the dimensions of my battery. She said, Yeah, I think we have that. I'll go get it for you. And the sun began to feel like my friend. And when she returned, she had tools to lend. And Angela and I worked side by side. And so we'd worked together since the dawn of time. And five minutes later, when I tried to pay her, she said, Pay for the battery. But you don't owe me anything. And as I turned to leave, she said, write a letter to Walmart and tell them what you think of me. So dear customer complaint department, I have nothing to complain about. In fact, I have nothing but good things to say. Please pass on my thanks to Angela today, and you should give her a raise. <laughs> and let her unionize. <laughs> 
sincerely.